What was that? Um, today I'm showing you how to make a delicious, fizzy, and dare I say, healthier alternative to soda or pop. Ginger Bug Soda is a naturally fermented probiotic rich drink that you can easily make at home. And you can make it in a variety of flavors that you and your family love. It only takes a few ingredients and some time. You'll be sipping away before you know it. Let's head into the kitchen. I'll show you how. Today we are going to make a ginger bug so that we can prepare ourselves to make ginger bug soda. You're like, what bugs? What are you talking about? A ginger bug is uh, just a fermented ginger thing. Uh, it's not a paste, it's not quite a liquid, it's a little bit of both, and it is the basis for some really, really delicious homemade drinks. So you can use it to make like a ginger beer or you can use it to make ginger bug sodas where you can change the flavor by using a sweetened uh, tea of some sort like an herbal tea or using fruit juice. So this is a project that it takes a little bit of time but mostly it's more about being patient. So um, what we're going to do to get started let me show you. You need a ginger root, you're gonna need some sugar, and you need some water. Um, you can use distilled water, uh, you can use water that has been boiled and uh, let sit. You want some really good quality water. When it comes to any fermenting project, the better the quality of your water, the better the quality of your project overall. So really that's it, ginger, sugar, water, that's all you need, and of course time. So we're gonna get started. I'm using a one quart mason jar or canning jar to do this in and I like to use a canning funnel because I'm messy. So inside of here we're going to put an equal amount of the sugar and the ginger and I'm going to show you the grated ginger and the chip that I'm sure everyone else but me knew up until recently and now my mind is like what? Um, all right so let's start out with two tablespoons of sugar. Regular white sugar is fantastic. Your uh, ginger bug will like to eat it for the same reasons um, why our bodies like to eat it. It's really, it's refined, it's easy to process. So, um, you know, think of it as like, it's almost like fast food for a ferment. <laughs> but maybe not quite. All right, so I've got my two tablespoons of white sugar in here, and now we need two tablespoons of ginger. So some people like to chop it. I prefer to grate it, um, which is what I did. So I grated most of it, and I'll just show you really quick. So I got, ta -da -da. I like to make these very heaping tablespoons, guys. One, and almost two, so I just take my handheld grater and then grate away. But if you don't want to grate it, absolutely dice it. Chop it with a knife, whatever makes you happy. All right, let's just put that ginger in here. It's really, really nice. Your hands are gonna smell great for the rest of the day. Okay, so for those of you who knew this already and you're like, old news, hun, um, okay, totally, I get it. But for those of you who might be like me and never knew this before, did you know that the easiest way to peel your ginger is with a spoon? You literally use the side of a spoon and you can just like that and it just peels right off. I'm like, what? I did not know this, it literally until about, I don't know, maybe a year ago. And now I feel like I have been so wrong for so long when it comes to ginger. So really simple on how to peel your ginger. All right, now that's aside. We have got our two tablespoons of grated ginger, our two tablespoons of white sugar. And now I'm gonna take two cups of water that I had brought to a boil and let cool to room temperature. 
Like I said, the better the quality ooh, of your water, the better the quality of your ferment. And so this way by boiling it ahead of time, it just sort of helps to get rid of any impurities or you know things that might be in your water that your ferment isn't gonna like. So at this point, I'm gonna take my spoon, give this a little stir, because I, I want this sugar to kind of dissolve a little bit. And that, my friends, is all she wrote for today. Literally, this is all you need to do. So day one, we're gonna prep this just like this. And you'll notice that I'm using coffee filters on the top um, because I want this to breathe, right? I want this, I want air to get in, but uh, I don't want dust or anything else to get in. So this is why I use the two coffee filters on the top, but this is what it looks like. It's just that simple. And I'm gonna put this somewhere where it's gonna be warm, but out of the way. And then for the next couple of days, what you're going to do is feed it. Yeah, it's a living thing, you gotta feed it. <laughs> so every day for the next several days, I'm gonna put in two teaspoons of the white sugar and two more teaspoons of grated ginger. And what that's going to do is it's gonna help that bacteria get the good bacteria, quote unquote, um, happy and healthy and growing and multiplying. We're looking for bubbles. So every day for the next few days as I feed this, I'll give you a quick peek as to what it's looking like so that you know what you're looking for um, when it comes to bubbles. Now, after it's really active and, and going, that's when we can take some of this ginger bug and turn it into our ginger bug sodas. Here we are 24 hours after we started our ginger bug. So let's check it before I feed it for signs of active fermentation. Now, I'm not sure if you can really tell, but there's a bit of a line across the top and you can see that there are some bubbles happening. This is a good thing. This is exactly what we're looking for. Bubbles are a sign of active fermentation and you can see that there are quite a few of them here in this jar. So this is fantastic. Um, now, you'll might even notice over the next few days you see all the ginger at the bottom of the jar it might even do I call it dancing um, as the fermentation process continues you might even see that ginger sort of floating up and down throughout the jar this is good so these are the signs that you're looking for in your first few days of your active ginger bug now it's time for me to feed it two teaspoons of sugar and two teaspoons of ginger it's now 48 hours since we first made the ginger bug and there's tons of active fermentation happening check out the bubbles you can see them you can see how things are kind of bubbling on the top. Doesn't that look fantastic? Let's look inside. Um, guys, this is awesome. This is exactly what you're looking for. Um, you can see some of those bubbles are popping. This is good stuff. So active fermentation is happening. I'm going to now feed my ginger bug and we'll check in on it again tomorrow. But this is the kind of stuff that you're looking for. I wanted you to be able to see the signs if you've never made this before and you weren't quite sure what it was that you needed to keep your eyes open. Here we are on day four of the ginger bug. Tails is really excited about it. Say hey Tails, that's Tails the wonder dog. Tails the Brittany. Okay, so anyway, what we're doing is we're checking out, do you see all of these bubbles here? That is phenomenal. You see how all the ginger is floating on the top? I mean, there's still lots on the bottom, but there's like a layer of ginger floating in all of these bubbles. We have got some seriously awesome fermentation happening here, exactly what we're looking for. So with a ginger bug, when you're first making it, it's anywhere from five to seven days before it's at the point where you are ready to use it to make your ginger bug sodas. It should smell a little bit yeasty as well um, as having these suns of active fermentation. Let's take a peek in the top, shall we? You see that? As well as my fingers, hello. Uh, but you can see how the ginger is starting to kind of hang out at the top. There's a few bubbles at the top. Guys, these are the magical signs. So tomorrow will be day five and this is looking pretty happy. So I think I'm going to start making those ginger bug sodas tomorrow. Every day for five days, we have been feeding this ginger bug and it is looking very bubbly, very, very happy. You can kind of see all those bubbles up at the top. You can see how the ginger is floating to the top in some cases. 
So I've kind of got like half of what I put in floating at the top and the other half at the bottom. This is good stuff. So um, this shows that it is ready for us to make those gingerbread sodas. So once you make your gingerbread for the first time, it's about five to seven days until it gets to that point where you're like, yes, this is what I'm doing. Once you get to that point, what you're gonna do is you're gonna strain one cup of the ginger bug off and then mix it with seven and a half to eight cups of, you can use fruit juice, you can use a sweetened tea of some sort, like an herbal tea or a fruit tea are really nice. You can mix it with lemonade. You can even go ahead and make a ginger beer, which I'm gonna address in another video. But what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna do two different flavors for my ginger bug sodas. Now, what you need to do is grab some bottles in which to put these in. So you probably recognize these. These are Grolsch beer bottles. And what's great about these is they've got that swing top, so they're airtight. So this is gonna help us make a nice fizzy soda. Um, also, because these were made for beer, they are definitely um, made for handling pressure because when you're fermenting something, it does build up a gas, which builds up a pressure, right? So sometimes those really cute decorative swing top bottles that you might find at home decor stores look like a good idea, but they're a thinner decorative glass. They're not made to withstand the pressure of something that is being fermented in them, whether that's kombucha or in this case, a ginger bug soda. So it's always good to look for something that's pressure rated or that you know has had something that is under pressure in it before. So these Grolsch beer bottles are great. Um, if you're not a beer drinker, you can always ask around and see if you know anybody who is. Um, some, now I've gotten these just as, you know, people has handed them to me, but these are wine bottles. So maybe you can check out your local brewing store and see if maybe they have something along this line. Um, I also have these bottles here and they're a wine mouth they're kind of like a milk bottle um, they do have a silicone seal on them they're wide mouth but these ones are not airtight so it they can build up pressure but it's it's a bit more of a balancing act it's uh it takes a bit longer and stuff so but they are really pretty and they're easy to clean and these are made for kombucha so you know that you can use them for something like this so today I am going to make a ginger bug lemonade soda with some lemonade. And then I'm also going to make a strawberry ginger bug soda. And I've got some strawberry fruit tea here that I'm gonna use for that. So if you wanna make it all one flavor, you can grab a pitcher, strain off your one cup of ginger bug, and then add your eight, seven and a half to eight cups of your lemonade, your sweet tea, whatever, to that, mix it up and then pour it in the bottles. Um, I wanted to give you an idea of what a couple of different things would look like so this is why I'm kind of doing it half and half so again one cup of strained ginger bug to seven and a half to eight cups of your sweetened whatever it is um, so here let's get started I'm gonna measure out four cups of the lemonade It's pretty much right on the money with that. And now I need to have a half a cup of strained ginger bug. So let me grab a spoon. Now how I'm gonna measure and strain mine, I'm using a tea infuser. It's perfect for this kind of thing, but if you don't have something like that, you can use a regular strainer that you probably already have in your kitchen. So I'm just gonna take this spoon and kind of give it a bit of a stir. Look at those bubbles, guys. So much goodness in here, so much goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna strain out a cup and I'll use half a cup in the lemonade and I'll use half a cup in the strawberry. So let's make sure that I can see what's happening here as I measure. Let's do one cup. Yes, perfect. Literally one cup on the money. So you can tell that this ginger bug is ready to use because it does have that yeasty smell as well as all of these fantastic bubbles. So I'm just going to pour half a cup into this lemonade. Mm -hmm. 
So what this ginger bug is going to do is it's just kind of almost like inoculating this lemonade, making it absolutely ready to ferment and to get bubbly and get that, you know, nice, lovely, fizzy feeling that we're looking for in a soda. So I'm just gonna grab my funnel and because this is super full, I'm gonna do it this way. Um, if you do this right in a pitcher, of course, this makes this way easier, but because I'm trying to do two different flavors, it might look a little bit more complicated today, which is a-okay. I should, fingers crossed, not spill it now. So for headspace, I'll see if you can see this, but I'm trying to fill it right up until this line here in the bottle. There we go. Let's get these lemonade ones poured and then we can move on to the strawberry ones. And there we have it guys. So we have got some lemonade ones. We've got some strawberry fruit tea ones. The next step for these guys is we're gonna leave them on the counter for a couple of days because we want that ginger bug that we have mixed in with the lemonade and the fruit tea or the fruit juice to have a chance to kind of do its thing and to ferment. And that's going to give us bubbles in these airtight bottles. Here we go, it's been several days since we bottled the ginger beer. Let's see how it turned out. So if you remember, I did some with a strawberry fruit tea and I did some with lemonade. So I'm gonna open up the strawberry fruit tea and do it carefully, because again, it's gonna build up some pressure. Oh. Here we go, after several days on the counter, after we added our fruit tea and our lemonade, it was time to pour, super fizzy. The strawberry one was ridiculously fizzy. The lemonade one is fizzy, but not as much as the strawberry one. So um, kind of the best of both worlds, really. Now, what you do after you've left it on the counter for a few days is put it in the fridge. And because what that does is it dramatically slows the fermentation process down. So the warmer it is, the faster things ferment, the colder it is, the slower they ferment. So that's why you wanna put it in the fridge and it'll keep it at a really nice, even keel. Um, the sugar that was in the fruit tea and in the lemonade is what helped to feed the fermentation process while we left it on the counter for a few days. And that's what helped to build up the gas to make it fizzy and foamy and delicious. So if you're looking for a different way to kind of get that pop or soda feel in your mouth, you know, the, that carbonated flavor, um, you can do that in a more natural and delicious way by making your own ginger bug sodas. They're really simple. You barely need any ingredients. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this ginger bug I'm gonna feed it one more time, and then I'm going to put a proper lid on it and put it in the fridge and rest it. Again, the colder it is, the slower the fermentation process. So this way I can rest it in the fridge, and then the next time I wanna make ginger bug sodas, take it out, let it warm up, feed it again, and then I can start this whole process all over again. So once you've got your bug going and it's nice and healthy, you're gonna be able to make ginger bug sodas for ages to come. And don't forget, things like ginger beer, which is coming in a future video. I'll be sure to link it here when it's ready. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you stopping by the kitchen. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm always doing something in the kitchen and I love sharing it with you. Thanks so much for being here. Cheers. <laughs>